Okay, I'm going to do something completely different this video. I'm going to take a step away from my other projects, and I'm just going to do a real quick and easy one-day build, um, or two-day build. Knowing the way I go, it'll probably be a one-week build. But anyways, I had an idea years ago to build a replica of the first computer mouse, as you can see in this photo here. I'll put up some other images uh, now. So there's lots of images online, and I want to build a replica. Now, I don't want to, you know, I don't know how the electronics inside works. I'm going to cheat a little bit on the internals. I only want it to look like this. I don't care how it actually works inside. So I'm going to cheat, and I'm going to use this, which is, see, this is version 1. This is version 2. So I'm going to take it from this back to this. And uh, this is an old ball mouse, and so my idea is to take the guts out of this and stick it in a block of wood. How cool is that? Um, or stupid. I don't know. Either way. Now, like I said, I had the idea to do this years ago, and that idea has just been kind of setting in the back of my mind for a while. And for some reason, it just kind of came up again. And I started thinking about it again, so I went to my IT guys at work and I asked them if they had any old ball mice, and um, he came up with this one. And I know it looks new and probably a shame to tear it apart, but I don't care. It's for science. Now, this is also going to be kind of my 1,000 subscriber special, because I just recently hit 1,000 subscribers, which I know... That's not a lot for most YouTubers. I know, you know, every other YouTuber I watch has like thousands or hundreds of thousands of subscribers or millions of subscribers. So only having a thousand really isn't that much. But for me, it means a lot. I, I want to thank all of you who did subscribe. Um, I want to thank all of you who watch and comment. And for one thing, I never asked any of you to subscribe. So the fact that you did means that you did out of your own... Uh, want and not because I asked you to and made you feel guilty. So, um, so thank you very much to all of you. And so, and also the reason why I decided to do this build for my thousand subscriber special is because, little known fact, fun fact, it was exactly a thousand years ago today that the uh, computer mouse, this thing, was invented. And there's probably a hidden screw under here. See it right there. There's a screw right there under that label. Right there. Those sneaky jerks. They're not too smart for me. All right, so that's the inside of that mouse. Pretty simple. Now, you'll notice that the wood mouse has one button. This had three. And I was debating about putting two buttons on it because you really kind of need the right click. I mean, kind of. I mean, you could get by without a right click. So I think I'll do exactly an exact replica now with just the one button. I could always put a second button in if I want to. And it's not like this is going to be my daily mouse user. I mean, I'll just use it once or twice and show it off and look cool at work. And then after that, it'll probably never get used again. So I'm not too worried about it. And, um... And also, I probably should have looked this up first. I don't know. There might have been other people to do what I'm doing. I mean, for as far as I know, I'm the first person to think of this and to do this. But for all I know, there could be a hundred people already have done it on YouTube. Maybe I should have looked first. Or not. Or not. You know, if I, if I look and I see other people have done it, then it's just going to pop my bubble. And, um, and I don't want to do that. I want to... I want to enjoy this build and not know if anybody else already did it. Um, you know what they say, ignorance is bliss, and right now I just feel ignorant. So, so the plan is, so for those of you who don't know how a ball mouse works, there's a ball, and as you roll that around the desk, that ball is going to move two wheels. Let's see if we can get a close-up of here. 
there's one wheel right here and there's another wheel right there and the ball turns those wheels and those are little encoders there's like a little there's like a little encoder right here and another one right here and of course that tells the computer which way you're moving everything I'm gonna unplug this for now get that maybe Come on. It should just there it goes. So unplug the cable for now. So we're just looking at the board. So I'm going to take a block of wood. I'm going to hollow it out, and I'm going to put this in it. Now you'll notice the wheels on the wood mouse. It's like a big aluminum wheel, and there's another one back here. Now I'm going to have to do a little bit more research. I swore I read online that these the original one was only one axis, like back and forth or up and down. I don't know which way it was. We only had one axis, but most pictures I look at have two. So one wheel here and another wheel going the other way. So I'm going to do it with two because one would be kind of pointless and stupid. Um, so I'm going to cut an aluminum wheel and figure out somehow how to mount that to here so it turns. There you can kind of see, all right, you see those little holes in the wheel? It uses light to watch those holes pass by. So I'm going to hook up those aluminum wheels. One will turn this one, one will turn the other one right there. That right there. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do that yet. I'm going to have to um, figure more stuff out because I'm doing this just like I do pretty much every other project. I just start before I even have a clue what I'm going to do with it. So, but this gives me an idea of what to do. I have plenty of scrap wood. I just need to cut a piece and hollow it out and screw this in it and make a couple of wheels, put it together. Done. Simples. So let me figure some more stuff out and we'll show you what it looks like here in a second. Okay, I have removed that piece from the circuit board and it was just held in with little plastic pegs that were kind of melted onto the back side. So I just cut those little melted posts and that popped right off. So the, the uh, photo uh, detectors are here and one here and the wheels then are in here. So there's one of the wheels and the wheels come out pretty easily. They just snap out like this. So what I have to do then is connect this to a little shaft to a bigger aluminum wheel. And it um, should be pretty easy, maybe. We'll see. And I don't need this part anymore. That part is what kept the uh, kind of the tension on the rubber ball. So I don't need that anymore. So we'll see if that pops out, maybe, just to simplify. Get rid of stuff we don't need. There it goes. Get rid of that. I think the next step is to make the aluminum wheels. Uh, I got plenty of aluminum scrap. I'm just going to cut out a circle. Now normally, when you're making something round, a lathe is like the perfect tool to do that. And I do have a lathe, but I'm thinking for what these are, it'll probably just be easier for me to bandsaw them out and, and sand them round on the belt sander. I could probably have that done before I even get the parts chucked up into the lathe. So, And for what this is, you know, they don't have to be perfectly perfect. So yeah, I'll make some wheels made. And um, if anything important pops up in the process, I'll, uh, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, this just goes to show you don't need a, uh, a lathe to make perfectly round-ish parts. Uh, these are cut out on a bandsaw, taken to a belt sander and files, and then sanded smooth, and they should work perfectly fine. And um, they are round enough for what we're doing. Because do you honestly believe they had lathes back then when they made that? But um, anyways, for the axle, I found these. This is a standoff uh, that I pulled out of something. By the way, if you are a maker, if you like making stuff, you also need to be a taker aparter. You need to like taking stuff apart. So before you throw something away, before your company throws something away, before your neighbor throws something away, take it apart and save all the pieces. I have storage bins full of parts and pieces that, um, you know, like here's uh, just some knobs and switches. But here's one full of a bunch of standoffs. These were pulled out of some, uh, some equipment that I took apart recently. And they had all of these aluminum standoffs for spacing circuit boards apart. And uh, so I had a bunch of these guys. And they should work perfectly for the axles 
for my rollers. So that'll go in the hole and then we'll put a washer on it like that and then we'll put a nut on it and then we'll need to tighten that nut. One of my favorite tools for holding round parts without marring it up is this guy right here. Unfortunately, as luck would have it, that just won't squeeze down tight enough. So, yeah, I gotta find something else to hold that. And I have these that are nice for holding round parts, but they have teeth around it that'll mar it up. So, to prevent that, we'll just, uh, We'll just put a little piece of tape on there so we don't mar it up just like that and then we can hold it like that so we can tighten the nut eh, nope eh, nope yeah yeah nope Nope. Yep. I'll get back with you in a second once I get these, because what I got to do is figure out how to, you know, put one here and one here. And yeah, so let me show you what that looks like in just a minute. Okay, so I take the wheel. So there's one that I have not modified. And here's one that I did change. And so what I do is I cut off that section right there, just like that, cut that off, and sand this just a little bit. I'll finish sanding that later. And then you take one of your standoffs, and it'll almost go over there. I just have to drill it out a tiny bit, so I've got a... Um, Drill, and you just go through and drill that. And then it will, um, yeah, starts to go. I'll just need to sand that shaft a little bit more so it fits in there, and then that'll be ready to go together, just like that one. And then we'll put them back in the cage. Okay, so here's my first problem that I should have seen coming. Um, so, for first off, this is normally the front of this board, uh, but it's going to have to be the back of the board uh, because the way I wanted to drive that roller here, so there's the roller. I wanted to drive it from that side because I figured that would be easier. Plus, when the ball is in it and you're running it left and right, um, that shaft turns opposite direction of the ball because they're, you know, doing this. I'm directly driving it, so now my left and right would be backwards unless I flip the board around backwards. So that actually works out pretty well. And to couple the wheels onto that shaft, I could use a little piece of this tubing. That tubing actually goes over those threads like perfect. And so I could then connect the other end of that tubing to the back. You know, I'd push it on more, obviously. And, uh, and then that, that'll drive the wheel like that. But if you guys are as observant as I am, you'll notice that those two shafts interfere with each other. So one tube would hit the other tube. And I should have seen that coming. I don't know why I didn't notice that. Um, that piece of plastic here and here are just there to keep those from wanting to slide out because obviously I had to modify this quite a bit to get the new things to fit. So what I'm gonna do, and as you could tell, I already glued that back on. I glued that back onto the board. I could pop that glue loose. But what I need to do is drive this one from that side. Um, but I need to figure out if that's then going to make the mouse go the wrong way. Um, I don't know. So I got to think about that. There's a screw up. I just thought I'd show you. Um, 
in case any of you ever decided to do this, um, you'll know what to what to pay attention to. Um, so, anyways, I got to figure that out. I'll get back with you in a second when I when I figure out how to make that work right. So this was supposed to be a nice, easy little project, but it kind of works. Um, so again, it'll be this way technically. Um, so I got that wheel to drive that roller. Right? And you'll notice it's floppy this way, and I put a brace here and a plug there holds it that way, so it can't really go that way much, but it's floppy this way, because when you put it on the table, I don't want the whole weight of this and the weight on your hand to go through the rollers. I want those to kind of flex up a little bit, and then they'll move. If I made those rigid solid, then all of the weight would be pushing on those and could possibly damage the rollers. That's my thought anyways. Even with a normal ball mouse, you know, the ball is kind of held in place by a little spring and a roller, so it's free to move up and down a little bit. So this one is a straight shot in. This one works okay. This one, if I made it a straight shot, that would make the thing like way too wide. So I had to keep this more center line. And so I used a piece of rubber tubing here. And that does work. That does work to turn it, but it's a little, it's a little stiffer than I would like. You know, this one turns nice and easy. This one's kind of stiff. So, you know, so if you had it on a pad, a mouse pad, when I roll it this way, that one's moving. When I roll it this way, that one tries to move. So it needs to be on not such a slick surface. If I do it on a paper towel, then it, it's moving. I know you probably can't see that very well, but it's moving now. And that doesn't move up and down that much as far as like when you put the weight on it because that IC right there is in the way it's hitting the IC it's dragging on the IC when it tries to turn so yeah um or or what I could do I think I just had a brilliant thought what I could do is make those solid so they can't move and flex around and have this whole thing like on a spring so when you push down, like little springs in the wood block will push that down. So those will make contact on the pad, but they won't be holding the full weight of your hand. I think that's the way to go. All right, so I changed this a little bit. Um, I had some plastic tubing that the aluminum shafts fit through pretty much perfect. So those are glued on solid now. So these are not floppy. They're they're nice and solid, and when this goes into the block of wood, I'll have a spring close to here pushing down and a spring close to here pushing down. That way, when you put your hand on the mouse and push down, uh, you're not pushing these against... Well, you're not going to break those off. Um, it'll make more sense once I get it installed, if it doesn't just yet. Um, so, and, and it works. So if it's down like this, when I move that way, that wheel turns. When I move that way, that wheel turns. So it's working. Um, it's not as loose as I was hoping it would have been. It's a little tight, but it does work. Um, I think the key to this ultimately is going to be what type of surface am I running it on. It's got to be just enough friction to make it turn this way, but not so much that it can't drag when it goes the other way. Okay, so next up. I need to carve out a block of wood. I cut a piece off of a 4x4 and then I split it this way so it's now 4x3-ish. And I'm not a woodworker. Um, I do mostly plastic and metal. I don't really have a whole lot of woodworking tools. Um, I cut this with my bandsaw, which did okay. So what I need to do, I need to get this down to the line and I need to hollow that out so this will fit inside. Um, so without any really good woodworking tools, I guess I'll just um, start with this.
first try. Okay, so when I was hollowing this out, a, uh, since there's end grain here and it was kind of thin, it broke a chip out and I, when it first happened, I got a little irritated and I super glued it back in and put some sawdust on it and pressed it in and fixed it. But then I realized that when I look at the photo of the thing I'm trying to recreate, well, it's got a piece broken out here. And, um, you know, I saw that I'm wondering, you know, what's, what's the purpose of that? Why did he do that? Why, why is it cut out like that? And I'm thinking, I bet he did the same thing I did. You know, it's end grain and it's hollowed out. I bet it just broke out and he just left it like that. So, uh, I'm going to cut that back out to match the shape here, just so it matches what I'm trying to uh, recreate here. So, um, kind of cool that I made the same mistake he made. So, um, anyways, what I need to do now is I need to anchor that corner in, but kind of on a swivel, so this can still kind of move around this way. And there'll be a spring under here and here. Well, I guess on top, because it's going to be pushing down. And the spring will be pushing that wheel down towards the pad. Then the other spring will be pushing this wheel down towards the pad to make contact. So it needs to be able to kind of pivot here so it can, so it can move around here and here. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, if not, it will after I do it. And then once that's in, I'll make a, an aluminum plate that kind of covers with some slots for the wheels, just to cover all that up, which is actually what the real one looks like. I did see one photo of the underside of, of that wooden mouse. And, um, and I think the, the wood is a little big. Um, I mean, I mean, it's kind of the same that way. And I know this is a photo. You can't scale stuff from a photo, but yeah, whatever. Um, I'll still sand those corners roundish like those are. I'll soften all the edges. Um, so it'll be fine. So anyway, so let me, uh, let me get this mounted in there with the, um, with the springs and everything and sand all that better to shape and get some stain on it. And then we'll see what it looks like after that. All right, so I got the box stained, and um, it's a little rough. I sanded it fairly smooth, and those little dents or divots there and there, I did that because they're on the real one. You know, got to make it look real. Got the little notch there cut out. Not exactly like that, but good enough. And I got my switch installed, and uh, going through the back there. And got the two wires that will solder to the circuit board, the original mouse. And on that part, I have the springs. And those will be pushing the wheels down into the ground or into your, uh, into your mouse pad. And those two springs will rest on a little piece of wood there and there. So when we put this in... And I notice I also added a few blocks, one here, here, a little thing here, and there. And I'll show you what those are all for as we put this in. Now these wires, so normally this is the left click here. I'm putting it in this way. So I'll solder those wires here. And you'll notice there's three points, but that one and that one are common. So all I have to do is solder my two wires to one of those and then the center one, and that'll be good. And they are, it is a normally open switch. So is the one in there, it's normally open, so it'll still work. So I'm just gonna feed those wires through here. And when we put this in, it rests on the block there and there, that kind of locks that in. And on that side, it rubs up against that plastic strip glued to the piece of wood there. So this thing is locked in. It can move this way and this way, but that's about all it can do. So let me get these wires soldered there. Obviously they're long. I'll cut them short and solder those on. So I'll get back to you here in just a second. All right, so 
those are soldered in now and I installed the cable which I almost forgot that actually uh, which that would have been that would have been bad if I ever would have forgot that um, I also have this cover that goes over there and before I put this on there's a little gap between here and this so if I just screwed that on then when I flip that over this would just want to fall so I need something to press that against the uh, the aluminum plate it was like black anodized um, but anyways um, and also to possibly insulate those pens from the aluminum plate so I was thinking I would try a piece of foam that'll give some squishiness That'll give some squishiness and kind of hold everything together. It might be too much because I don't want it so thick that it presses it up. I just need it. I just need it to hold it off of the aluminum plate. So if I cut this in half, like that. Try that. Perfect. So notice that wheel sticks down, but as soon as you put your hand on the mouse and move it, that works. And then that one. So we'll screw this down. Now, when you look at photos of the real one, there is an aluminum plate on the bottom. It's shaped a little different from mine. I don't think it has this portion here. Um, but I wanted at least three screws holding it on, and I can't put one here. Because if I would have put a block here to put a screw in, it would have gotten in the way of putting the, um, of putting the donor mouse in. So... That's why it is the way it is. And I guess I could take that corner off here, maybe. Uh, because again, when you look at the photo here, there's obviously there's nothing back here. And when you look at mine, you can see the plate there. So I could cut that off. You know, I could cut that off here, cut that off like that probably be a good idea to do that but for now and I should probably do something about that that was kind of junky the way I did that um, probably put some RTV or something in there or a rubber grommet or something and finally I need a red button now I don't have a red button but I have a black one that'll be good enough so there there's my button so what do you think just like it huh the only difference is that's black and that one's red I should probably leave it just so there won't be any confusion I wouldn't want anybody to look at this and get confused with the real one so I might leave that black but if I ever find a red one I'll swap it over and again like I said woodworking is not my strong point so uh, give me a break on that I did smooth it out make it roundish kind of like that is you know for for ergonomics you know so next thing Honestly, I think it looks pretty cool. Um, for as stupid as this is, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, but we got to test this thing out. So let's plug it into a computer and see if it actually works. Which, you know what? Would have been smart of me to check before I started tearing it apart. I don't even know if the donor mouse works or not. So let's see if it works. Okay, sorry for the poor lighting. But uh, there's my uh, shop computer screen and my new router that I got. And I'm using... The scrap block of wood has the mouse pad. I figure since the mouse is wood, the mouse pad should also be wood. And it works. So if I move, if I move this, oh, no, come on. There it goes. Notice how slow it's moving. 
I'm moving the mouse this far and the cursor is barely moving. Of course I can go up eventually. So something I didn't think about, the, um, the ball moves the wheels a whole lot faster than my little than my little uh, aluminum wheels. So there's a definite um, mechanical disadvantage moving that cursor. So I can scroll over here and man, I need like a 10 foot square mouse pad. Almost, there we go. We'll click that. I know you can't see what that says. This is not in focus at all. But um, I just clicked to start my uh, CNC router software. But yeah, this thing, you've got to move it like, like, sorry, you've got to move it like that much to get the cursor to move like an inch. So it's not ideal, but it does work. So pretty cool. Kind of. So there it is, the world's first replica, maybe, of the world's first mouse. Um, if you didn't like this video, why are you still watching? It's kind of weird. Um, if you did like it, that's probably almost as weird. But don't worry, this is not my typical type of video. This is just some stupid thing I decided to do. Um, again, to thank y'all for, I said y'all, to thank you guys for a thousand subscribers. Um, so I get a thousand subscribers and you guys get a stupid wooden mouse build. So uh, that's cool. Um, yeah, next. I need to get back to other projects. This was a big distractor for my normal projects. But um, yeah, as always, thanks again for subscribing. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking. And um, join me next week when I build a mouse out of a block of cheese. Later.